<laughs> you know, we, we, we had a, uh, I had another talk with our, our uh, manure management uh, community. And this is one of the things that we brought up, you know, what, to what degree do we um, handle our manure? And uh, there was quite a discussion about if you happen to be what they call in the control zone, which is the area from the, the one farm that turned positive, they're going to draw a circle all the way around that. As you're moving manure out of that, you're going to have to test to make sure it is clear of uh, high path AI so that you're not spreading it around. So the idea of maybe having to take those trucks or a car wash or, or a truck wash before they come back and forth to a farm is going to be a real deal. So, um, Greg, we have a question. Um, if what would you do if you have a backyard flock and the birds get sick? And it may not hurt to go over what symptoms you should watch for, too. Okay, so a, a dramatic drop in uh, food or water consumption, uh, a, a massive die off that you could not explain, even with backyard birds. I mean, if I have six birds and, and two or three die, then that's a uh, that's a big uh, red. Um, uh, red flag, you should first contact your state veterinarian because the diagnostic laboratory quite possibly is closest to you in your own state. If you cannot get to that number or there isn't a, a, a diagnostic lab in your state, call the USDA hotline and there is a hotline number that you can use and uh, that allows you to get in touch with the national veterinarian and they will send a person in to check those birds that's what's been happening with all those uh, um, backyard flock detections somebody notices a big dramatic drop or or high um, mortality and they got the birds in to be diagnosed because there's lots of times um, you know birds die for various reasons just like other livestock you just have to sort it out sometimes it's a matter of swabbing and taking these swabs in to be tested to see what kind of antigen uh, was at fault. Okay, and another question for you, Greg. If a fresh source of chicken litter is to be used for fertilizing your garden, what is the minimal curing time that you should have before application? I like the idea of composting for 14 days, roll it over and go for another 14 days. So that's a month. Okay. Just to get that two, the two heat cycles through the, the pile. And then we have someone commenting that um, they see a lot of backyard farms and little acreages disposing of the manure embedding in the woods, thinking it just turns into soil. <laughs> no, not recommended at all, simply because you need to put it where you intend it to be. And uh, if it's uh, if it's top dressed out in the woods, then it could possibly inter uh, interact with the streams and waters of your state. And that is something we don't want to do. So the setback idea is a really important thing to, to note. I, I do, you know, you show pictures of that wellhead. I know of three or four farms around here, not too far from where my office is that have exactly that situation. Cows are actually rubbing on the wellhead. That's not a good thing, no. And then um, we also have another comment just that says that they used to inspect nurseries for a disease. They would spray their boots down before each site visit and regularly wash their vehicle. Might be something we... Yes, so biosecurity happens both on the farm and off the farm. So if you're going, if you're an educator or a, a extension agent and you're going to visit a poultry farm, there is usually a protocol involved that includes washing your car, using rubber floor mats, and then uh, you would sanitize going into the farm. You would put on special clothing, um, PPE, before you visit the flock, and then you would reverse the order coming back out and wash the car again. This is something that we do on an ongoing basis. It's nothing new, but uh, because of heightened uh, awareness now with HPAI in the area, we're really going to the, to the nth degree uh, to make it happen. And that's why we're washing tractors. I have pictures of foamers foaming these big four wheel drive tractors. There's foam all over it, soapy water all over it. We're washing, we're, we're, we're disinfecting to the nth degree. And uh, 
so far in Pennsylvania and Ohio, we haven't seen anything. And I think some of it is due to the efforts that our farmers are taking. Yes, if you go to the USDA APHIS website, there is uh, numbers there that you can to uh, get in touch with someone if you suspect a flock uh, coming down with something. When in doubt, reach out. And, and you know, you can call me and I will get you the information. 